In this week's video, I talk about Hegel lesions on shoulder MR orthography versus extravasation of injected catalinium. If I were to make a PowerPoint presentation about a Hegel lesion, that would look something like this. First, I would put a random logo of my hospital onto the PowerPoint slide. Then I would add an image of a normal shoulder and an image of a Hegel. And you can see here on the normal image that we have the axillary pouch or the axillary recess with this capsule here. We don't really see the anterior band here on this section, but more on that later. Then we have the Hegel lesion, which is a humeral avulsion of the glenohumeral ligament, meaning that this inferior glenohumeral ligament is evolved here from the humeral attachment. And you can appreciate this here. We have the same structure here as we have here. Then it's frayed and torn and it should actually belong up here, but it's torn and we have here an arthrogram and all this bright structure is exervasation or leakage of gadolinium that was injected into the joint through the tear of the Hegel here into the periarticular soft tissues. And this sign here also looks like a J and this is frequently called the J sign, which seems to be one of the signs to look for when assessing a shoulder MRI for a Hegel lesion. Next, I would show you a study like this where they compared patients with arthroscopically proven Hegel lesions that had a prior MRI or MR orthography with a control group. And to no surprise, all the patients or most of the patients with a Hegel lesion had an extravasation of conscious material, either along these different sites that we quickly go through. And if it's not present, then they had at least a J sign. So you can have leakage along the shaft leakage into the teres minor, leakage into the quadrilateral space, leakage into the quadrilateral space before surgery and after surgery to emphasize the point that after repair here it's now tight. That's the easy approach and you now have two different options. You take the blue pill, the story ends, you wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. And watch other videos. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. That was a little bit too dramatic, but the point is it's not so easy and it's not just black and white. I have three new patrons that I would like to welcome here. Uh, this is TMA, Jonathan and Ruben. Hi guys. Thank you very much for your support. It's really humbling to have you on board and it's amazing that people like you are willing to support my channel here. Thanks a lot also to all my other Patreons and you can see the list right here. Patreons basically are volunteers that support this channel with a tiny donation every month, uh, starting with as little as $2 a month. And for that they get some extra content depending on how much they are supporting the channel with. And you can find more information about this in the link here or in the description down below. Just a quick reminder regarding the anatomy. So this is a sagittal view and we have the glenoid. We have an inferior glenohumeral ligament complex and it comprises an anterior band of the inferior glenohumeral ligament and a posterior band. The anterior one is the important one and it's thicker as well. And then we have the axillary pouch, which uh, is just a thin uh, structure and not band-like like these two here. A good starting point is this article here in HR, which is freely available and I have the link in the description down below. So basically they had um, MRI of a Hegel lesion in four cases. Patients had arthroscopy, but it was a false positive case on MRI. And we go through the cases here quickly. Basically that's the first case. And you can see we have some extravasation here. This is a real J sign. I can imagine this to be a J sign. And then what they found in arthroscopy is basically this rent or a small hole in the glenohumeral ligament complex, but it was mid substance. So it was not at the humeral attachment site here. So it was more like a mid substance tear. And then the term Hegel is 
basically not the correct term. In this second patient here, again, they described the J sign and some exacerbation of contrast here in this arthrogram. This is probably the J. And on arthroscopy, there was a tear in the inferior glenohumeral ligament, but not reaching to the humeral insertion. And in this case, they saw some strands here in the axillary recess and a little bit of uh, exacerbation here. Patient went to arthroscopy a few years later, but um, obviously there was a posterior uh, labral tear, but nothing here wrong in the inferior glenohumeral ligament. And I thought that the conclusion is interesting that MRI might actually reveal the injury to the inferior glenohumeral ligament complex. Uh, I'm not saying it's a hay collision, but an injury at this location. And in arthroscopy, they saw these tears in the axillary pouch or mid substance and not necessarily at the humeral insertion. Therefore, the MR findings that are typically used to describe Hegel lesions overlap with other injuries of this inferior glenohumeral ligament complex. So maybe we can use the term uh, lesion of the inferior glenohumeral ligament complex instead of Hegel lesions because obviously it's not always that clear. So this is a very good study quite recently. It was published uh, last year and it's available on HER and you'll find the link in the description down below. So they looked at quite a large number of MR arthrograms and identified true inferior glenohumeral ligament complex lesions and uh, examinations with iatrogenic extravasation and they had some inclusion criteria which is quite okay and in the end they had 35 MR orthograms nearly half of them true lesions and half of them iatrogenic contrast material extravasation. Now, and this is already one of the key results here, that in basically most or nearly all cases, there was contrast extravasation through the axillary pouch. None of the true lesions had solitary extravasation through the posterior aspect of the axillary pouch, which means that the anterior band, the posterior band, and even the anterior portion of the axillary pouch was intact. Then also, I think it's important to realize that iatrogenic contrast material extravasation on shoulder MR orthography is not rare. You will encounter that if you do MR orthography of the shoulder. So be mindful about it and have it at least in your differential diagnosis before you write Hegel in your report. Now, this is also very important. If the anterior band is torn, then you are really dealing with a true lesion. This is also shown here that of the 19 patients with iatrogenic extravasation, all of them had an intact anterior band. So this is a very specific sign. And then also, uh, this was mentioned before already, if you have an isolated disruption of the posterior aspect of the axillary pouch with intact anterior bands and posterior bands and anterior axillary pouch, then you are dealing with an iatrogenic extravasation, according at least to this study. And this also is uh, supported by the study by Biliani, who found that the posterior portion of the axillary pouch is the thinnest portion of the inferior glenohumeral ligament complex. Now let's have a look here at the images. You can see we have some contrast here outside the joint. We have here the axillary recess or the pouch. And it's slightly alterated here. And here there is probably the hole. And this was confirmed here. So this is a disruption in the mid portion. And I think it's nice that they write it's an inferior glenohumeral ligament complex tear and not a Hegel lesion because the humeral insertion is intact. And this is a similar case, but this time it's an iatrogenic contrast material extravasation. And you can see it's through the posterior axillary pouch and you can see the axillary pouch posteriorly sometimes have, has like a little bit of a bizarre uh, delineation. And they did arthroscopy and the inferior glenohumeral ligament complex was intact here in these two cases. So you see sometimes these strands here and it can look quite lobulated. We have the extravasation around here and then this one here, but it looks not intact, but if it's only at the posterior aspect of the shoulder, then it's most likely just an extravasation and you should not refer to this as a Hegel lesion. Now let's go back to the conclusion of that paper and 
because they wanted to see which signs can differentiate between exteriorization and a true lesion. And they say that a torn anterior band is 100% specific, a thickened ligament over 3 mm, a reversed tapered caliper, so that would be this one here, it's a reversed tapered caliper here, looks like a J, it's also specific, and the scarred margin were 100% specific for a tear, and if it's an isolated disruption of the axillary pouch posteriorly, then it's an iatrogenic extravasation. And these are some criteria that can help us to differentiate between a true inferior glenohumeral ligament complex lesion and iatrogenic extravasations. Looks like you took the red pill because you're still watching. Congratulations on that. And I really appreciate that you made it thus far because it's a not so easy topic. It's tedious to watch these papers and going through these papers, etc. But I think it's important to have the background, to have a little bit of an overview over the literature because in next week's video, we will go through real MR cases together. And I think now you have the background and all this information that is necessary so we can go quickly through the cases. And I don't want to do this now because then the video gets too long, basically. So make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe if you haven't already and also make sure you hit this little bell button because then you get an email every time I upload a new video. And with that I'd like to close, thanks for watching and see you next week.